Um, and uh, then there was a miracle which meant that he didn't, he, he didn't leave and uh, he then took this road and ended up in what is currently Swiss, Switzerland. This is a very historic day for us because we're coming together to be part of a European project and we're thinking globally and acting locally. And in acting locally, all the county councils here present, all of us, different organisations present, form part of a route and part of a pilgrim way that we're trying to get up and running uh, over the next few years. Uh, I think it's very significant that we are coming on board because it shows there's an interest, there's a product here that's worth uh, going after, and there's a product here worth developing. Uh, Colin Bandus, 6th century, we're trying to trace his footsteps. But we're trying to trace his footsteps in the 21st century. That means that we're trying to connect the historical past with the present and the challenge of present of the present. So pilgrimage and pilgrim walks and walking tours and the whole thing of walking tourism is part and parcel of the new Europe and the Europe of today. Uh, David mentioned to me that there are many people from the United States coming over to Europe to do these walks simply because they don't have them in the United States. There's a tremendous tradition here right across Europe which finds its origin here in Ireland, both North and South. And we want to tap into that energy that's around the rest of Europe and that's why we're here, that's why we're trying to get this project up and of the Abbey under St. Congal. Um, it was one of the, the centres of learning in Europe.
number of years after having wanted to leave Bangor um, on occasions was finally granted permission to, to do so and, and travel to Europe. He left from Bangor with uh, a number of uh, fellow monks from uh, from the Abbey, uh, including St Gaul, uh, would have probably been the, the most famous of uh, his followers. Um, Gaul himself was probably the, the, the better of the two when it came to the, the languages um, that would be needed. Um, and Gaul uh, gave his name to St Gallen in Switzerland and that's, that's where he, he stopped his journey um, and, and sawed his days. Um, as I say, there's, on the education side, the schools have, have struck up relationships. Um, on the church side, it's seen a group formed, the Friends of Common Balance Bangor, which um, has, has been in, in existence now for a, like two or three years. It's very much interdenominational. Um, it's made up of Catholics, Protestants, non-believers, people just with a, a love of history um, and the story that, that Colin Ballas left. Um, so it's given that sort of community feel and, and brought together a group of people who have, since the 1400th anniversary, have managed to keep uh, an annual event going each year, which again was something that took place in towns and villages throughout Europe, but didn't take part in Bangor. The legacy of, of Colin Bannis. There's the the monasteries in, in Bobbio in Italy, let's say in, in France, but throughout France in various small towns and villages across uh, large swathes of Brittany, there are tens of and twenties of churches uh, all bearing his name, um, whereas in Ireland there's maybe only a handful. Um, so it shows the impact that he, he certainly had in Europe uh, and the legacy that he left. Colin Bannis is revered and how important he was to the, cult, to the culture of Europe and the continent. Um, you know, you see all the statues, you see the schools, the churches, the streets that are named after him. Um, it's, it's incredible. Um, and to see actually, you know, the, the impact that his spirituality and his learning, which is our story, had, had on Europe, uh, you realise it's something to be very proud of. I actually believe, um, I'm sure uh, people here would agree with me, that you know it, it's a story that deserves a kind of centre, like a satanic centre. Um, uh, yeah, really, uh, and actually, I would easily say much, much more than a satanic story. Like, just there's so much to it. And when you look at something like uh, a place like Glendalough, uh and the amount of tourists that go there. Now, admittedly, they can see something that is a monastic settlement much, much later in history, and it looks very beautiful and lovely glen. But it shows you the interest in that from, from tourists. When you look at what they do with the Titanic Centre as a way to tell a story, and actually to direct people to other sites, like a fantastic story about the rise of uh, Christianity and monasticism within Ireland, and then how that learning and spirituality was developed and uh, then, they then brought to the continent and the kind of legacy that that left is just huge and they see part of the international story of what um, people from a small island can do and make a huge impact upon the world and it, it should be celebrated.